Story continued from Hell Creek Playlist. The first rays of the sun's light are peeking over the horizon, promising a new day. Across the forests, fields, and marshes, many dinosaurs are already stirring, while others get ready to sleep, waiting for night to take over again. A pair of Akira Raptor are heading home for the night, but almost stumble into what first appears to be a boulder with odd protrusions. When the boulder snorts, however, the small dromaeosaurs get an unexpected fright and almost fall over each other as they leap away. The creature they flee from is a sleeping Denvasaurus, an armored dinosaur six meters long and weighing three tons. She yawns and stretches, revealing the armor plating that runs from her neck to the tip of her tail. Now awake, she looks at her surroundings. This whole area is unfamiliar to her. She has been separated from her herd for a few days now, and has wandered far from home. Denversaurus prefer more open, drier environments, so the swamp she currently finds herself in isn't to her liking. She does appreciate that water is far more easier to come by, however, and drinks from the shallow creek. Other dinosaurs are becoming active as well. In the distance, she can hear the calls of Alamosaurus, and not too far away come the telltale sounds of Edmontosaurus crashing through the undergrowth. Currently, she wants to find any other Denvasaurus, and has been tracking her herd using her sense of smell though they've stayed well out of reach thus far. The sun continues to rise, and the female Denvasaurus marches along. With her head so low to the ground, she is having trouble seeing through all the foliage around her. She can, however, detect what other species have been through this area recently, and one scent worries her. This part of the forest has a strong scent of Tyrannosaurus rex, the only carnivore she truly fears. Now alone, her fears are greatly amplified. Fortunately, from what she can tell, there aren't any that are particularly close by. But that is because the closest one is downwind of her. Right behind her, in fact. Tracking her scent, peering over the low-lying plants, the monster carnivore has been tailing her for a few minutes now, closing the distance and waiting for the opportune moment to attack. This is the injured male that is still on the hunt for his waiting mate. He has kept himself fed, but unable to return to the nest with anything. His caution is brought out of experience with these heavily armored plant eaters, having dealt with the much larger Ankylosaurus in the past. Tyrannosaurus do have the bite force to break through the thick armor of these animals, but that does not mean hunting them is an exceedingly dangerous. Denvasaurus may lack the tail club of their larger relative, but her tail is covered in sharp osteoderms that she can wield like a whip. Not an easy target, even for a near 9-ton giant like himself, especially with his damaged leg. Even for T-Rex, stealth is the best option, and in the low light of dawn, he has gone unnoticed and will soon be close enough to strike. He gets an unexpected stroke of luck when the Denvasaurus stops to feed on some ferns, positioning herself so the predator is in her blind spot. Capitalizing on the opportunity, the Rex sneaks forward at a slightly faster pace, his footsteps barely detectable thanks to the protective pads on his feet that muffle sound and distribute the impact sideways instead of forward. The herbivore doesn't notice anything, but eventually detects something moving behind her though it doesn't feel that close. She twists her head around to look, and sees the one thing she fears, standing only 10 meters behind her, her nightmare made flesh. She didn't stand and fight, her mind went straight to running, and the predator followed. She moved as fast as her legs could carry her, but the Rex was essentially only a couple steps behind, and in a few seconds had advanced to her side. In desperation, she wildly swings her tail at her attacker, but there is no power behind it, so though she smacked the carnivore's underside, all it did was cut the skin. 
The Tyrannosaurus lowered his head down, putting his snout between her left forelimb and left rear leg. He then lifted his head. With seemingly little effort, the giant flipped the moving Denvasaurus over, and she slid along the ground, feet in the air, head and tail flailing. Crying out, she skidded to a halt along the wet earth. If given a moment, she could right herself, but the Rex gave her no time to do so. His massive foot slammed down on her midsection, making an escape next to impossible. Then his massive jaws engulfed her head and neck. The predator bit down. There was a moment of resistance as teeth met armor, and then a faint series of crunches rang out in the morning air, and the Denvasaurus went quiet before all movement stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex pulled back his head and stepped off his prey having finally secured a meal. Using his front teeth, he began to pull at the unarmored midsection of the herbivore, going for the softer parts first. One of the short arms got in his way, so in irritation, he grabbed the intrusive limb and tore it off before swallowing. Bones that size would have been no issue for a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The male didn't realize it, but this chase had taken him just outside of his territory, into the neutral ground between another Rex's region and his kill hadn't gone unnoticed. A deep rumble came from ahead of him, and looking up, the male saw he had unwanted company. Marching across the neutral space was another male T-Rex, one that was older, but much larger. The difference was clear to see even at a distance. This male was longer, taller, and a colossal 10 tons in weight. The elder let out a deep bellow from his open jaws, a warning to his younger neighbor, who even without his injury knew this was not a fight that he was likely to win. Tired and frustrated, the younger male turned and walked back to the border of his territory, surrendering his well-earned kill to his larger foe. As the elder pulled apart the carcass, the defeated male tried once again to pick up any scent of potential prey. If he did not get food to his mate soon, she would have to leave the nest to feed herself, leaving their unhatched young vulnerable to countless threats. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the rarely found ankylosaurs of the Hell Creek, Denvasaurus. The holotype remains consist of a skull missing the lower jaw, and an assembly of osteoderms that formed the armor that ran along the animal's body. It was originally named in 1986 as a species of Edmontia. However, in 1988, it was separated into its own genus, that being Denvasaurus chilesmeni. The genus name being after the Denver Museum in Colorado, and the species name being after Lee E. Schlesman, a benefactor of the museum. Also in 1988, a more complete skeleton was discovered in Wyoming. Being slightly more complete and given the nickname Tank, which was also attributed to Edmontia, only to later be found as another specimen of Denvasaurus. These remains were found to be an ankylosaur in the Nodosauridae family that lived in North America during the Maastrichtian age of the Late Cretaceous between 68 and 66 million years ago. In 2010, Gregory S. Paul estimated Denvasaurus to have gotten to up to 6 meters long and weighed 3 tons, making it one of the largest nodosaurs. Its validity as its own genus has been contested multiple times. In 1988, Robert T. Barker first believed it may have been the last surviving stegosaur, which looking at the skull, it's not that hard to see why. Now we know it is most likely a nodosaur and definitely within Ankylosauria. How they discerned it was a new genus came down to mostly looking at its skull anatomy. These included positions of the eye sockets, the width of the rear of the skull, inflated cranial sculpturing, differences in the armor around the skull and others. Because of this study done by Michael Burns in 2015, Denvasaurus is a valid genus being closely related to the previously mentioned Edmontia and Panaplosaurus. As we can see, Denvasaurus had a covering of osteoderm armor that ran from its neck to the tip of its tail. Though the spikes don't reach the extremes of some other species, 
they did get to their maximum length along the neck and shoulders, keeping such an obvious target well protected. Like other members of its family, the underside was not protected, leading to one theory that if threatened, nodosaurs would simply drop to the ground and swing their tails to a threat just gave up. The tail itself had multiple rows of osteoderms, and while the base of the tail may have been quite stiff, the force generated would have made the tip of the tail quite deadly against small to medium-sized predators, and a serious threat to large ones. Of course, the armour likely originally evolved for display purposes, and was just conveniently excellent against predators. This is speculation, but looking at the position of the shoulder spikes, it's possible males may have jousted, using these to lock onto an opponent's shoulder and either push against each other in a test of strength, or trying to get under each other and flip an opponent over. Now, Denvisaurus belongs to the Hell Creek Formation, which has provided many exceptional fossils of many famous dinosaurs, such as T-Rex, Triceratops, Taurosaurus, Edmontosaurus, and fellow Ankylosaur, Ankylosaurus itself. Surprisingly, both of these armoured giants are known from very few remains, however. This is despite the fact that they are literally covered in osteoderms that could fossilise quite well, and the fact that the Hell Creek has a preservation bias for larger animals. This is not to say ankylosaurs were rare in the Hell Creek. The fossil record is not a reliable record of how populous individual species were, just where they died. When we look at ankylosaurs worldwide, many of them seem to favour drier, arid environments. The Hell Creek was, well, very swampy, having lots of coastal plains, floodplains, and forests. It's entirely possible that Denvisaurus and Ankylosaurus didn't regularly frequent the wetter lowlands, where they would have fossilised more easily. Question is, are the ones we found individuals that got lost, got transported to the area by floodwaters, or the species in general just rarely died in areas more likely to fossilise their remains? Whether it was a regular site or a rarely seen visitor, Denvisaurus is still a very important member of this family, and was one of the last surviving Phyreophrians, the family that included Ankylosaurs and Stegosaurs. How it stood up to large predators such as Tyrannosaurus rex is up for debate, but I think it goes without saying a rex would definitely weigh its options when facing a Denvisaurus. There were definitely easier meals to catch, and I feel they would only attack using the element of surprise. But what do you think of Denvisaurus? And for my question of the week, which of the options I provided do you think is the best explanation for why we find so few Ankylosaur remains in the Hell Creek? Also feel free to put forward your own thoughts on the topic if you have any theories. What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.